unfortunately, I only have this giant size to work with right now. Not ideal. Separate you a bit for thawing purposes. I've <laughs> encountered some really disrespectful food out there, I would imagine. <laughs> Oh, okay. This will get used this week, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, I have to do all this with my left hand because my right hand's contaminated. This is hilarious. All right, get in there, chimkin. Be flat, freeze beautifully so that you're easy to thaw later. Thanks. I have a, I hate my freezer. It's like, it's small because it's narrow. Narrow because it's a British freezer. And then it's like three drawers. And it's not, it's not ideal. Freezing like ice cubes in there is such a pain in the ass because when you pull it out, it like slightly, slightly tips downward. So when I huge freeze my like chicken broth in my one cup cubes, oh my God, it, oh, it's, it's almost always spilling. When I become a bazillionaire, I will make a kitchen that actually works for me. But until then, I'll just slightly complain. Even they don't let it go bad, it's not always respectful. True. All right, that's butchered. That's, that's done. I'm actually done. Good job, B. Um, where'd the lid to this go? I don't know. Let's sanitize, or at least move things over for later sanitization. Ah, it's on the floor. Aha! I need to sanitize you as well. Get these out of here. Doop, 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 doop. I think it's time for my breakfast. Pretty soon. What time is it? Oh, yeah, it's noon. <gasps> Let the fast be broken. But since I gotta cook a couple things, I'll just make it simple. Just make like my bowl of yogurt and stuff at all. All right. Chicken day is always like, ugh, so much sanitizing, so much worry. All right, let's get this guy. Soaking a bit. I'm sorry, cutting board, I know. I almost never butch the chicken anywhere near that cutting board, but sadly, I sacrificed for the stream. Actually, next time, maybe I'll do it over here by the window. It's got good lighting. It's the place I normally do it. I couldn't like really put the camera very well, so I think maybe over here, this side of the kitchen. Lighting's beautiful. Look at you with your ducks, they're all in a row. Like poor guy in the seventh day on the tequila blunder. It's only because I'm streaming. And I'm dealing with chicken. Actually, that's really the, re the major reason why. I'm a pretty messy cook, but when it comes to chicken, it's just, nope. My husband got sick once from, um, I don't think it was something I cooked, but it was like, around the time I cooked him something. Cause what I cooked, it made no sense that there was like no cross contamination. There was, it was like bacon and it was really well cooked and I never touched the raw bacon. Like I, I'm really careful when it comes to raw meat. So I was almost certain it didn't come for me. Um, but it, he had something a little bit before that it could have been that I had no, no part in. But when you are even tangentially around a time that somebody gets ill from eating, like that scares the shit out of you. I've always been scared of chicken anyway. I'm always like really attentive to it. And honestly, British chickens are not really that as scary because they get inoculated for a lot of things that American chickens don't. But if you've ever had that happen, <laughs> you get a little more anal retentive. 
but I've been cooking him for him for five and a half years. Uh, right now I cook just about three meals a day for him every day and have since basically the pandemic started. And uh, for only one time to that happen, it's pretty impressive. I'll do it over there too. One more. This has some antibacterial stuff in it, so. But you should see me bake. That's when the tidiness is very much gone. <clears throat> okay. Oh my god. Eight pounds of shrimp. Ooh, man. I guess, like, if you eat too much of anything, what, especially an animal, like whatever it might have eaten, you're going to eat that much of it. Just like why you're not supposed to eat too much tuna. <clears throat> Whoops. I think I'm pretty lucky. My gut's pretty sturdy. I've got food poisoning once uh, here in the UK when I was visiting like a bazillion years ago, a totally different lifetime, but to replace that, that Band-Aid. But I'm not having chicken hands anymore. Um, yeah, I was, I had gotten like a street sausage to eat real quick before I was going to see, I think Wicked was the play I went to see. And then the next day we were going to Paris, no, Brussels, and then Paris. So <laughs> I got food poisoning from that sausage, get your minds out of the gutter, and then spent uh, a day in Brussels trying like hell after a whole train ride with it, trying like hell to like enjoy waffles and beer because I'm in Belgium and that's what you do, and then like had to spend the night by myself while everyone else was hanging out uh, in my hotel room, and then we went to Paris for like five days, and the whole time I was in Paris, if I ate even like a bite of anything, my stomach would swell up and I couldn't eat anything else. So I spent five days in Paris eating virtually no food. That was the saddest day. Amazing how flour gets every when you put the paper bag onto the counter. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> Opening a new bag. I did, had to do it for sugar too. I was out of sugar and I filled a, a container full of sugar and you like open the bag and it's just everywhere. There's got to be a better way. It's better than the plastic, but yeah, it's everywhere. It doesn't matter what I do with flour or sugar or baking soda. It's going to get everywhere. It's just, it's just how it's going to be. And I just remembered I have to do the skin. And I did all that disinfecting. It's fine. I'm going to make myself some breakfast first. You're going to see the fastest, saddest breakfast. Let's move this over here, though, because we're going to go over there in a second. That's like the saddest story ever. It was horrible. Uh, zero out of 10 would not recommend getting food poisoning before you're going to go to some like culinary beautiful places. <clears throat> nope, that's not what I meant to do. That is. Where is this even at? No, no, there, sure. You wanna see how I cook for myself? <laughs> so you see how I cook for my husband and how I prepare meals for myself. Cause what is it? He's not up for probably a couple hours. Best peanut butter in the world, man of life. So good. I ended up getting it in the giant tub because it's more cost effective and we'll go through it. Oh, hi, BDO. How are you today? Oh, no, sawdust. That's terrible. I would feel so horrible. It's like my worst fear is cooking for a like, group of people and then something going wrong. All right. Here we go. Yeah, we're gonna stir this peanut butter. I have to stir it every time. <laughs> Yay, natural peanut butter. It's so big. Awake, I think. Well, at least it's in the realm of possibilities. 
clunk. This stuff is usually like 350 for like a pretty tiny bin of it. I guess I have one that's like this size. So this is like 350 for a tiny one of these. And it's a bitch to stir. But this is only like nine pound and it's so much easier to stir and it'll last a long time. So definitely worth it. All right, peanut butter. You're gonna, you're gonna laugh. We'll take care of that breast in a bit. Deep roast crunchy, mm-hmm. I like the deep roast creamy more, but for some reason it's a lot harder to get the creamy. But deep roast crunchy. Man in Life is the brand name. I think it's British only. It's so good. Their deep roast one, uh, ones are, are so fucking good. That's coconut yogurt. I get whatever dairy-free yogurt is on sale. I prefer, oat or if you could find it here, cashew, but it's really hard to find. <clears throat> I am too BDO, but for this peanut butter, deep roast, whichever they have in stock, I'll get. They don't sell the deep roast creamy at our grocery store at all. It's only the crunchy. And then I ordered the that big tub off online and their crunchy would arrive in like a day and their creamy would arrive in like two weeks. So you make two when it's really good peanut butter. Peanut butter. Honey Greek yogurt over butternut squash pancakes. Ooh, those sound good. My normal breakfast is, this is usually like my lunch or dinner. My normal breakfast is usually some uh, Mexican spice scrambled eggs with spinach and tomato. It's real simple, real healthy, gluten-free bread. I miss gluten a lot. <laughs> I miss all the things gluten can do a lot. But alas, dairy and gluten are massive inflammatories to me, and my joints have been hurting like crazy, so. Break it is. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. That's local honey, too. It's like the farm that I used to get the veggies from which I can't for a while because they're too expensive. But yeah, it's, it's their honey. It's really nice. It's a really light honey. Do they pull what flowers are on this? Sometimes they'll tell you what flowers they have them go to. It's just some sort of blossom honey. It's really light. It's really nice. Because <clears throat> that yogurt, I, I don't like coconut yogurt as much. It's got that little tang. So the honey kind of cuts it. It's just some raw rolled oats. Straw, not cooked. You remember slice of slice up a banana, and that's it. That's like such a filling breakfast. Like I said, my husband gets all the good cookings. He'll get probably like a full English when he gets up. <laughs> he gets the good cooking energy. Ooh, nice BDO. <clears throat> I don't do smoothies anymore. I, I, um, I don't like to break up any fiber that I possibly can't. Uh, and for some reason, just like the act of eating is always so much more, like gives me that satiety that drinking my calories doesn't. But there is something to be said for the portability of smoothies. I guess because I, I don't work outside of the home anymore. It's, that's when I used to have them. Drink them on the way to work. But there you go. It's my breakfast. All right. Let's get cooking other things while I eat this. Sorry. when I do intermittent fasting for brain reasons. And uh, when it gets to my breakfast time, which is noon now, like nothing will stop me. <laughs> Whatever I'm doing ceases to exist until after I've had my breakfast, my vitamins, and my coffee. Because I can't, I don't like black coffee, so I can't have coffee until 
after I've eaten. Chia. Yeah, chia seeds. Uh, what else? Once upon a time, I did something really fun with chia seeds. What the hell was it? I mean, obviously, people use it a lot for, like, overnight oats and stuff. Um, oh, God, I can't remember. Once upon a time, I did something really good with chia seeds. This was in a previous life when I lived in, like, California, and getting things like chia seeds was super easy and cheap. Um, all right, I'm going to be out of frame because I'm making coffee. Here, you can stare at a bowl of stuff that people come in and are like, what is she cooking? Oh my god, it's gross. Why is she streaming this? She should put herself in a different directory because this isn't food. Oh my gosh, oh, I think I only have the tiniest amount of oat milk I made left. It's all separated. It's fine. Mr. Twist! Probably sort out a regimen. Oh, I'll tell you in a second, Mr. Twist. I'll show you the vitamins I'm going to take, and I'll explain why I got every single one of them. Did intermittent fasting for a year. Lost a total of 151 pounds. Dang, I hope those were pounds you needed to lose. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm doing it because it's supposed to help with um, cognition and being ADHD brain completely unmedicated, which is, we'll talk about vitamins, um, and having a <laughs> dementia slash Alzheimer on both sides of my family. I literally do everything I can that shows to uh, uh, slow cognitive decline, even though I'm only 41. I don't have to worry about it quite yet, but uh, it's never too early to start when you have that genetics on both sides of the family. I'm prepared for that eventuality, but trying my best to stave it off. Is there a category on Twitch for like housework or things like that other than just IRL because I, I want to I have to like redo my office quite a bit and it would be fun to have company while I do it just because it's a menial task <clears throat> chat will help you stay sane <laughs> chat is always reliable for that always all right, this is my uh, oat milk that I made from just raw oats. But I definitely like this. There's a lot of separation and a sliminess, which there's ways to get around it, but they're really involved ways to get around it. So I think in the future, I'm just going to do cashew milk. But cashews are expensive, so. Mm. Here, look at my vitamins. We'll do a vitamin show and tell. As Mr. Twist asked. So, one thing you can do, and I usually would like highly recommend this, is you can get a, a vitamin panel from like your doctor or a nutritionist, see what you might be deficient in, and go from there. It's usually how you're supposed to do it. But um, I've been taking vitamins since I was super tiny. My chiropractor, when I was young, he actually helped cure me of. Um, uh, seizures as I was having. It turned out I had a uh, an allergy to dairy milk, which was the formula my mom was using. And I was like in UCLA Medical Center. They're trying to figure out like where these seizures are coming from. Anyway, the doctors were trying to put me on some anti-seizure med that might have stunted my brain development. And my mom's like, is this going to kill her? No. Okay, let me find another thing. So her and my doctor together, or my chiropractor together, figured out that it was a dairy allergy, but doing a lot of research. At the time, it was not very well known. Now it's better known. but And they cured me of it. And so my mom and I listened to him about nutrition stuff for most of my life. Um, and he was big into homeopathic vitamins, supplements, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm a little more comfortable doing it for myself because of that. There is not a cleaning type category, brood. Um, yeah, Mr. Twist, it's really good. It's really important. 
like one of the biggest things that helps with immunity, uh, your immune system is like vitamin D, D3, the other Ds, but D3 especially, but people tend to overtake it because they assume they, they're really low, especially if they're, they pull gamer hours or not outside very often, um, depending on how much melanin they have in their skin, but people can overdose on it really, really easily. So things like that, having a, having a vitamin panel before you start it to help like figure out what you need. And then after you've been taking it a while is really important, but I'll show you what I take. Um, these are Brazil nuts and it's actually for selenium. Um, this is one of the few things I actually get just the food instead of getting a supplement for it. Um, selenium, I have a, a mild case of hypothyroidism. And so I choose to just um, like avoid raw cruciferous vegetables, um, like the brassicas and stuff. They all, I need to have them cooked. Um, so I avoid that, and then I take some things to help with my thyroid, one of which is um, um, selenium. It's one of the precursors for thyroid stuff. I used to two BDO, and then I didn't. So let me just on my Brazil nuts real quick. Um, this is, it's NAC. I can't remember the name of it. N-acetyl size. Cy Cystine, cystinine, whatever. Um, it's for lungs mostly. And thanks to a uh, really fun experience in Australia where I either got a really bad fungal infection or a whooping cough. They don't know because of the time I finally saw a doctor, it uh, had already passed and I only had the scar tissue remnants. So I'm really susceptible to any sort of uh, lung attack and infection if I get a bug. So that's why I still don't go anywhere with COVID because um, my lungs are already fucked. I don't need more help. Anytime anybody gets a cold, it turns into like a massive lung attack for me. So that's why I take that. Um, uh, this is kelp. Kelp is also for thyroid. It's the iodine in it. I don't tend to have uh, use a lot of iodized salt. So because of that, I supplement it with some kelp. Um, this is magnesium. It's good for uh, like um, cramps and periods and stuff. Basically a lot of, like the smooth tissue stuff that happens for women during the, or, or anybody who has a period. Um, uh, it can help ease the symptoms of that. So that's the main reason why I take magnesium. It's also good for other things, but um, turmeric because I have a lot of inflammation because uh, of many, many, many joint injuries. And rather than taking Advil, the anti-inflammatory property of turmeric is about the same as like Advil. It doesn't have the painkiller part, but it, um, the anti-inflammatory part is just as good and it is much healthier for your liver. <clears throat> you still have 20-20 vision? Fuck you, BDO. <laughs> um, this one's L-tyrosine, which I take because of ADHD, almost exclusively. It's a, uh, it's along the chain to dopamine, and since I'm fairly dopamine deficient, that's why I take that. There's a couple more I could take, but I limit the amount of things I shove in my body because I don't know the full consequences of the I haven't researched it. These are all things I've like extensively researched. Mm, damn, body rolling, good for you. Um, this is what you take, basically. This is um, a fish oil capsule, but it's a high EPA one. I have it somewhere in here. So omega-3s, but the EPA and DHA, that's the other one. Having like a, a good amount of those is for me really important. It helps with um, lipolysis, which is like the ability for you to actually lose fat. Um, <clears throat> I put on quite a bit of pounds during COVID as I'm sure a lot of people did. And uh, I didn't really care about that aesthetically. I don't give a shit. <laughs> As you can tell with the no makeup hair, just wearing things, whatever. Uh, the aesthetics didn't bother me, but it was hell on my joints. Hell, hell, hell on my joints. So um, yeah, that helps with um, uh, like the mobilization of fat, which for women, especially in like these areas, we have really, really low blood flow, which is why we retain fat, especially a lot in our hips and stomachs. Men as well in the stomachs, that's why like the beer bellies happen here. It's just a lot of like lower blood flow. So it helps like mobilize fat cells. Um, but yeah, instead of just having like fish oils, I make sure it has high EPA and DHA. There's also a lot of studies that suggest this is really good for ADHD as well. So that's why I take double dose. Vitamin C, because I don't eat a lot of citrus anymore and 
whatever. Multivitamin, there's a new study that multivitamin is another one of those things that reduces um, cognitive decline in, as you get older, especially in the elderly category. They had a study that was just released about it, but obviously just to cover all my bases because, um, you know, fill in any nutrition holes. And then vitamin D3. Is this 4,000? Do you use? I use, yeah, that's, I take 4,000 a day uh, because I'm in a very northern latitude and, uh, well, not, not like mu very northern latitude, but fairly northern latitude, and I'm not outside very much, so I take a bit extra. So there you go. So I think part of it is identifying your need, Mr. Twist. I know a lot of my needs because of things I've been diagnosed with in the past. Um, doing a lot of research making sure there's peer-reviewed articles that support that research, not just anecdotal um, information. And uh, I don't do this just because I'm a little more comfortable with it, but I yeah, highly, 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 highly recommend making sure you get your levels checked both before you decide to jump into anything or consult a nutritionist, um, and especially after you have started uh, taking supplements for a while. So there you go. Mew, did you hear your name? You're welcome, Mr. Swiss. My pleasure. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the few things I know about. How are we doing? Mm, another 15 minutes with that chicken. All right, you're going to eat my breakfast with me and take my vitamins with me. I can't take those yet on an empty stomach that will make me throw up, especially that multivitamin. And we're going to have coffee together. There you go. You get a nice view. I have to mix it because it's homemade oat milk, so... You see my, for my spoon go back and forth from here to there. Mew, I was saying that I take vitamin D3 because I live at a fairly northern latitude. And they said, well, fairly northern, not mew northern. And then you popped right in. That is interesting, BDO. Yeah, my dad was far, has been farsighted hit most of his life. I have been wearing glasses for farsightedness since I was eight. My mom didn't have to wear them until kind of age got to her. Um, yeah, the shitty thing is you get more farsighted as you get older, generally. So if you're nearsighted, like your eyesight can probably, generally, of course, it's exceptions, generally improves throughout your life. But when you're farsighted, you just get more and more <laughs> blind as the years go on. Hooray! Mm-hmm. Last thing on intermittent fasting. If you have breakfast at midday, do you eat your last meal of the day at like 6 p.m.? Your feeding, like how long you feed for can vary. Mine's eight hours. I don't, um, I like to do my exercise first thing in the morning, so I have to have something left in the tank. So mine's usually at 8 p.m. But it, there's, there's lots of different, like, it doesn't even have to be per day. It can change. Some people eat for six hours. Some people eight. Some people 12. And, uh, for me, the important thing is just taking advantage of that sleep time and, and putting some hours before and after. And I'm not super strict with it. If I'm really hungry, I'm going to eat. I don't deny myself uh, if I can tell this is a legitimate, like, my blood sugar is getting fucked with. I'll eat. So, yeah. I knew you'd have something to say, Mew. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, and it's just what has worked for me. I'm not... I've never been one to restrict foods because um, this is all a big trigger warning if people have like a history of ED stuff, like go away for a bit. I don't want to trigger anybody, but I can't deny myself like a food. Gluten and dairy aside, because that's, I, I have to, otherwise everything hurts for a bit. But like, I don't not eat carbs. I don't not eat fat. I don't not eat whatever. Um, 
I'm, I'm like the Michael Pollan, 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 I can't remember how to say his name, um, view of things. Uh, eat real food, not too much, mostly plants. That's basically me. <clears throat> I try not to eat white starchy things, but it's okay if I do. Yeah, like this is a pretty typical meal for me. I got a fruit, I got a grain, but it's a whole grain. I got natural sugary thing. Yeah. <laughs> Bina. Can't remember the last time I played a video game. It's been like two months. No lunch meal? Might try intermittent fasting to work for me before. Yeah. Do it. Find your, it's always worth trying. I'm always a big fan of like experimenting with the human body as long as you do it healthily. Because everybody's a little bit different. I never thought I could go. Like I always was somebody who ate breakfast first thing in the morning. I had to do it. If you're wondering why I'm not drinking my coffee, it's so I'm not allowed to drink my coffee until I've had my vitamins. Otherwise I'll forget. Um, yeah, I had to have breakfast first thing, but my body just like, probably some of it is my hormonal shift as, you know, I'm, I'm 41, I'm trying to like, probably about to be like perimenopausal. Hooray for that! Um, but uh, also like my body adjusted to it. But everybody's going to be a little bit different. I don't think Twaz could ever do um, what I do. But his metabolism is totally different to mine. Mm. Gotcha, you. So are you going to see me taking a bunch of pills? I have to take them in a specific order, too, so if I'm hunting for pills, you can laugh at me. Nope. That one. No, what did Tiddly say? I pull my phone out, but it's basically dead. What did she do? You are the best vintage. So are you, BDO. Oh, can I click that safely? That's gonna fuck that up. Can I do it here? Maybe I can do it here. Peanut butter plus streaming, bad combo. Seen enough. I've seen enough. <laughs> I like that your reason for going keto, Bina, is to upset other people. That's always the spirit of what you should take on an adventure of your body. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, more power to you. That's not anything that would ever work with me. I wouldn't, there's things I wouldn't uh, recommend to people, but if they choose to do things, like I'm never gonna yuck somebody's yum, right? That's a doctor's job. If it fucking works for you and you feel good, you get on it. Totally woke up and chose violence, indeed. <sighs> yeah, that makes sense to you. Like, again, maybe your metabolism just totally works differently. Everyone's different, right? All right, last ones. All right, there we go. Now I can have my coffee and we can render some chicken fat because food's done. Couldn't pull out the raw chicken again. <clears throat> Until that was done. Uh, you, you can come over here.
Microwaving tea. There's a uh, homesteading YouTuber that, and she's like homesteading, but she also cooks a lot, like really delicious looking food, um, that I follow. And uh, she always like microwaves coffee from the day before. She doesn't, usually doesn't eat it all or drink it all. And it's just, it hurts my soul. One, how could you leave a coffee behind? I don't understand. And two, just drink all the coffee. <laughs> mm -mm. <clears throat> oh, speaking of that, BDO, there's, uh, I keep talking about YouTubers because that's, I have a lot of that on usually when I'm doing all my chores. Uh, but there's this, the Simple Living Alaska couple. I love their fucking channel. Those two work their asses off. Like everything they do is just so much effort and it's exhausting. But as a result, they've like earned their calories and they make some of them like mo the heaviest, most decadent meals, like using like, um, uh, moose tallow to make like everything's just so rich and fatty and heavy. Like each of their meals has to be like 3000 calories when, when they're, especially in the heart of winter. And I told, I told Toise, I'm like, this is my dream is working my ass off on like my home and the food and all that stuff. Just like, sur not survival. Cause that's like, I'm like, it's still modern communities and still have internet, but just like on working or like my land or my house or whatever, I'm working so hard that I earn those huge fucking meals. Cause right now I don't earn them. And so I'm like trying to eat what I'm supposed to eat, but man, to earn that kind of girthy meal, it's a dream. Yeah, theirs is definitely more life or death in Alaska. All right, uh, let's get the chicken out. Chicken, breasts. We're gonna cook these next, at least one of the breasts in the tenderloins once this is done, which it's almost there. Crank that up a little bit more, get a little more mired niceness on it. Um, but I'm not gonna put it on or near the cutting board. But oh, this cable is gonna go like right where the chicken, raw chicken stuff is gonna be. This cable is much longer, let's pull it. There we go, just like hang out over here, thanks. We'll put it here for now, cause I'm gonna, Everything in Alaska has enough fat for that. No lean meat in the Arctic Circle. So true. Um, yeah, watching them just like, they go moose, either moose hunting or they get, sometimes they get like um, roadkill moose or um, the moose that have been like taken away from people hunting illegally, et cetera. So I've seen them butcher a couple moose. Uh, they raise their own chickens and they, uh, when they, they don't like raise their chickens for meat, but sometimes like they have to dispatch some of the, the male chicks at a certain, as they get a certain age, because you can't have too many of the roosters in the same little group. Um, but they're fishing, all the stuff they do for fishing. It's just like, they can everything. They grow some incredible stuff considering they're in Alaska. Um, just watching them put their food together. It's just so good. It's like their food's very rustic. That's the word I'm looking for. And so it's really high in calories, but they've earned it. Like they work their fucking ass off. I just love that channel. <sighs> yeah, the meat is mean, is lean mew, but they, there's a huge, the meat itself, but they have like big, um, stretches of, of fat that like around their organs and stuff. And they take that fat and they render it down into tallow and they use it in everything. So yeah, the meat itself is actually pretty lean from what I can tell with them. Most wild animals are right. Um, like the actual meat, but they have huge fat pouches. Um, that's the stuff that's just like, it's great. All right. I'm not going to need either skin before I take it off and double checking. Look how big these breasts are, they're huge. Look at this. I can't believe this is only five pound. All right, sorry, get over Jasmine. All right, 
<clears throat> um, let's dirty every knife we have. <laughs> They must hunt, they don't, they certainly don't hunt the bears. They, they have like a off-grid cabin um, in addition to their house, which is, well, they're technically off-grid, but they're like off the street cabin. You have to do it by boat or snow machine. Um, and they have, it's so cool, they have um, claw marks on there. Like every time they go visit, there's always some bear claw marks on the side of their house. The fact that there are claw marks isn't cool because you gotta like take care of that, but it's neat that they're so close to that. Thigh is better than breast. We already got the thighs. They're sitting in the freezer. You calm your little titties there, BDO. They're sitting in the freezer. They're gonna be peri peri chicken burgers later this week. You calm yourself. Oh, that one just came right off. Gotta love a cooperative skin of boob. Hey, Raul, how are you today? Just gonna cut some chunks off. I gotta remember to not cover these. So I cooked these before for Toise, and then I like put them in a lidded container because I didn't know when he was gonna be awake. And uh, I thought it was cool enough to cover, but it lost all of its crunch. So just remember, just like leave him out. He'll be awake in not too long, probably anyway. So get him some nice crunchy chicken skin. Okay, you're good. Good. That's great. This year uses chicken skin for chips and makes nachos with it. Mwah. Delicioso. These are uh, like really nice, especially if I were to get the skin from the thighs as well, but I'm gonna leave them on just in case. Usually I take the skin off for his chicken burgers, but it's possible that I might um, do a skin on this time. Um, but oh, it's so good. I'm not one who's like a big fan of skin, eating skin products, but it's really good because it's homemade and really fresh. Oh, no Fenring. Well, welcome back. I lost internet connection too, but I have no excuse other than BT's an asshole sometimes. And they're bullying me to get their fiber, I swear which I'm not against, but requires people to be in my home. Can I say how lovely it is to finally be done with Twaz's books? <laughs> I know I said it at the beginning of stream, but I'm so happy. It took a week. That's why I haven't been streaming. It took a week to go through a year's worth of his books. Ugh. I was happy. I'm happy to do it. It's how I can help. That's like my forte, and so he can continue on wizarding. But man... So many transactions. Should be utility error? It absolutely should. They were voting for that here in the UK and then it got voted down because, you know, politicians. <clears throat> I don't know that it was fiber, but it was at least internet itself. But I wish they could do it without coming into our home and then I would have it, alas. Oh, that's pretty much done. That's great. And there's some font on the bottom of that too. <clears throat> I think I can put skin in cold. Just gonna render that out anyway. Cool. <clears throat> I know, right? No more forced housewifing. What do you mean, Bina? All right. Which one will butterfly? I think this one's gonna butterfly better, so we'll save that one for later. I'll cook that one fresh for Toise. But these are gonna go in the oven. Um, 
That is a that is a hefty breast, but I'm gonna leave it. Oop, there's a bit of there's a bit of rib on this. Who butchered this chicken? Oh wait. That would be me. No, that's not a bad idea. Have a little feel. Make sure I didn't get any bones in here since it was me that butchered it. I'm just gonna leave it. Normally I'd pound that a little flatter, but I've had no problems with my chicken breasts in the oven lately. They've been doing really well, so I'm just gonna leave them. <clears throat> it is a hefty breast, look at this. I mean, I have small hands. Oh, there's a joke there, but like, that's a big breast. That's a nice, that's a nice booby we're working with here. Oh, body rolling, that's awesome. Yeah, like, I have some issues with Starlink for different, for, for reasons, but, like, someday I plan on moving to, like, rural Scotland, so I'm gonna need it too. But I think it's, it's so wonderful to bring it to folks who have had just, like, either piss poor internet or none. So I'm super, super happy for you and for anyone who uh, can finally take advantage of it. All right, you're gonna be later. <sighs> I'll just cover you up in that. That's fine. That's probably not going to be too long. It'll be Twaz's like early lunch. Chat, help me decide. With the drumsticks and possibly wings too, we'll see. Should, I'm gonna make chicken and adobo sauce. Should I do Mexican adobo or should I do Filipino adobo sauce? What do you think? The Filipino adobo sauce is like, well, the way I'm gonna do it, because I can't find half the ingredients, is just like some, uh, it's, it, the sauce is like some vinegar, regular vinegar, because I don't have all the cool stuff. Um, light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, a little bit of brown sugar, because I can't find palm sugar very easily uh bay leaf it's pretty simple it's more like soy deliciousness or mexican adobo which you probably know what adobo sauce tastes like if you're in the u.s but it's more chiles and and tomato tomatoey kind of goodness um i'm debating i've never made i've made mexican adobo once and then you can turn the sauce into like enchilada sauce and stuff um but the filipino one sounds really good to just like put over rice really simple but like doing something right kind of thing. Here, look at this while I'm talking. Can you see that? There you go. That's what we're doing. I'm going to render some fat. <clears throat> Mew. My wife would say, make your own version of adobo. She calls it Frankensteining. Well, those two flavors certainly don't go together. <laughs> the Mexican chiles and then like the soy sauce is a bit much. So I don't think I can Frankenstein that one. But I'm just debating like which direction I want to go with it. I know I want to do that because I don't like drumsticks on their own, but like a braising it is what I want to do basically with drumsticks and possibly also the wings. Um, but that's just like, it's such a good braising sauce. Both of those are really good braising sauces, so. Mexican adobo, 100, 100%. Uh, a lot of it's a space clutter, Bina. That's my main issue with it. Uh, it seems to have put the chicken before the horse. So that's, that's my main issue. <clears throat> Oh, we are dripping. This oven needs to be cleaned. Someone clean this, this oven for me. I don't wanna do it. Oh God, I still need to get those silicone covering. I hate using cling wrap still. Next thing to do, make it as spicy as possible. The only, that's generally what direction I'm leaning to because I would love to make enchiladas sauce or make enchiladas with a leftover sauce. The only reason I'm hesitant to go that way is it's a lot harder to find, not harder, it's much more expensive to get um, dried chiles here. So 
Like they are super inexpensive and very easy to find in the States. They are much pricier here in the UK. Basically anything that's like a very Mexican forward flavor is a lot more expensive here. Plus those types of peppers generally are very difficult to grow in our area. So it makes sense why it's more expensive, but just, I can't like get it from the grocery store like you can in the US. I'll have to order it special online. Render out little fat. Give me schmaltz and chicken skin. Delicioso. Are you a fan of hot sauce? Uh, I am. I use it very sparingly, though. Twaz is a huge fan of hot sauce. Do, do, do. It's not uh, body rolling. It's not necessarily the satellites themselves. It's all the stuff involved with the launch. There's like little bits that can happen as well. There's like what's um, Wozniak from former Apple dude. He's actually creating a company to help combat all this space junk that's in there. Partially because of this. Currently has poblano tomatillo with no fat golden cayenne grapefruit. Oh my god, that sounds delicious. Uh, my dream is to grow, is to get like a high tunnel and be able to grow uh, my own cayenne poblanos, jalapenos. I can't, you can't like find a jalapeno at the grocery store here very easily and reliably like you can in the U.S. Which Growing up in Southern California, Mexican food was like a huge part of what I grew up eating and how I grew up cooking. So to like not have a jalapeno you can just like get from the store, it's so frustrating. Um, and like pickled jalapenos are nice and all, but like it can't hold a candle to fresh, so. Um, yeah, and poblanos for obvious reasons are fucking delicious. Yo, Rectifier, welcome back! Is what we could in cooking gonna cause a big explode? No, it's just chicken. Well, it's gonna be chicken fat and chicken skin. That's delicious, right? I need a spatter shield, but money. All right, this is probably done. Oh, that's looking great. Oh, my oven needs to be cleaned so bad. We'll dial this down to 200. Oh my God, it smells so good. Look at those, look at the carcass. Look what I did, chat. Okay, it's really hot, really hot, really hot, really hot, really hot, really hot, really hot. Ouch, 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 ouch. Whew, I can't hold that for too long. Oh, that looks so good. That font on there, mmm, you are gonna be tasty. You gonna be tasty. Ow, ow, ow. Let's dial that back just a slight bit. Well, Bina, some, some houses don't have the luxury of having a built-in oven, so you have to get a stove-oven combo. It's not an insisting. A lot of people don't want that, but uh, a lot of it is just <laughs> houses didn't used to come with appliances. A lot of them still don't. They have holes where appliances would go to keep cost of construction down. Um, chicken, let's put you once on parchment. Mix pepper mash and let's it ferment for like a month before making the sauces. Ooh, his last batch was roasted poblano, hatched chilies, agave, braised onions, garlic, cilantro, red spinach, serrano, yellow fat tail, salt and spices. Why? Are you being such a hoe, BBL? <laughs> the fact that I have Cholula is like amazing to me. And then you go off flexing that shit. <sighs> yeah. 
and I can drive 10 minutes to pick it up. Um, if your goal was for me to, to hate you, <laughs> you're getting there. <laughs> you're getting closer by the second. Ouch! That is a spitty little shit. Um, this is my piece of America chat. Everything but the bagel. It's just, it's just so good. I tried to keep this like flavorful, but still kind of neutral because this chicken is mostly going to be in his Caesar salad. I'll let, we have, I have actually a decent Caesar sauce. I don't make it from scratch or anything. I'm only so much of a scratch cook. Uh, but work smart, not hard. This stuff's so good. Mm -mm. I get random texts from him and his wife like, we're cooking. My response, heard. And then you just go. Oh, I'm so, I've never been madder at you, BDO, than I am right now. I've literally never been mad at you before, and now I'm fuming. Fuming. Uh, it needs a little more seasoning, and I need to wash my hands first. It's so much raw chicken today. I also have to order my damn groceries for tomorrow. I'm so lucky. So because of the queen's funeral, uh, the sh most of the shops, including the grocery stores, are shutting down. <laughs> and I'm lucky I looked. I, it's not a thing I would think about. I'm American, right? I don't think about that kind of stuff. But they've instituted a bank holiday, and usually the grocery stores open on bank holidays except for, like, Christmas. Well, not Monday. And I usually get a grocery order Tuesday, which means because one day is closed, that means, like, all the days surrounding it get double booked, and I got so lucky. I got, like, the last slot anywhere between Saturday and like Wednesday of next week. That is almost done. Do, 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 do. Smoked short rib and smoked beef cheek. Beef cheeks are so underrated. Probably gonna take those tenders out after about 20 minutes and that breast after about 35. That's a big honker. Okay. Doing a lot at once. Not good for somebody who gets easily distracted. Stop popping. Here, you just think about what you're done so I can reach at. Is your imported food section for America I just have ranch and stuff like that in it? <laughs> it's got a lot of like chips and, and candies, but I haven't been into a grocery store for years. It's all, I've only ordered online because I still don't drive here and Toise doesn't generally work like keep normal hours so we just order and have them delivered for the most part but yeah from what i remember it was like american candies american crackers and like stuff like that just more pantry items i guess it, it usually is right um yeah ranch would be hilarious it, they literally just put like a zucchini there but call it a zucchini instead of a courgette look there america <laughs> All right, go have a great lunch, Fenring. Hi, Neo. Good morning or afternoon. Ooh, grouper cheek. Nice.
with as much Indian as the UK enjoys, I'm surprised there's not more pepper available. I don't, like, I, I, here's the thing. I think, like, a lot of American or UK cook, kitchens don't actually cook it. They'll go eat it, but I don't think they actually use a lot of the spices themselves, right? That's, uh, like, going to the corner Indian or chip shop or some, something like that is, like, a pretty pretty big thing here is to get it delivered or especially if you live in a slightly bigger area just go pick it up um i don't know i, I doubt that they many households actually cook cook with it so hence the lack of availability there's like a mexican grocer it's called mexicangrocer.co.uk that i've gotten a couple things from but sometimes their back order is really really long if I, I, I would imagine they only get shipments only occasionally they can get like mexican tortillas and like masa, which I'm going to be getting pretty soon. Um, tons of dried peppers, but usually in massive quality quantities. Like I, I can't afford like a 30 pound bag of, of, uh, ancho chilies, you know, <laughs> sorry, I don't need, uh, like 600 guajillo peppers. I'm good. All right. We're gonna get that off in a second. I forgot to get a thing to put it in. I think this is heat tempered. Hmm, since I don't know for sure, let's not use that. Cause that's gonna put, it's pretty cold down here. I'm gonna put this hot shit in there. Vraka there, call it arugula. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time going out to eat here was kind of like a, a shock. What is this aubergine and rocket salad? What's going on here? I've never heard of these things. You're allowed to ship those things to the UK. I don't actually know what the food shipping laws are here. And now since like Brexit is a whole thing that's happened, it's hard to keep track of what rules that I learned uh, even apply anymore. Did I leave that on? I didn't, I'm smart. Do you need to be able to cook for the next decade? <laughs> I mean, at some point, I would like to have enough money to, like, buy those things in bulk. Right now, it's just, like, the amount of money you need ahead of time to save money in the long run is quite a lot. Like, for things I use a lot of, like oats. I use a ton of oats. Um, cashews. Um, and dried peppers would be an instance, as long as I found a recipe I know I would like. Ugh, but the amount like required ahead of time is just like, whew. Need money to save money. What's the saying? It's very expensive to be poor. Not that I'm poor, but that's the saying. Okay, that's in the oven. We got, we got Dems's. So that's the bones carcass, wingtips, cartilage, all that stuff. That's all roasted down. I'm not gonna make stock today because I have a bunch in the freezer and um, I don't have a lot of veggie scraps. I haven't been cooking with a lot of onions or carrots the last few days, so I don't have any. So I'll just, I'll just take all these roasted bits, put it in a Ziploc. I have another carcass in the, in the freezer that I'll do a big batch of at some point, but that's future stock. We got some skin. We got some chicken fat, which I will I should pull off before it gets too cool. Um, and then I can use that to cook some veggies in. Oops, loud noises. Later this week. If I had something to cook right now, it would be perfect, but I don't because I'm doing some oven stuff with it instead. I could butterfly that chicken, but I think I'll just leave it. The one that I'm gonna cook for his couscous lunch. Maybe I'll get some stock out of the freezer for his couscous. They called cilantro coriander over there. You know that coriander is a spice, but do you know where coriander comes from? Cilantro plant, it's the seed of the cilantro plant, so it makes sense why they call it coriander.
I don't think you'd be able to get a 30 pound bag of long grain rice, but holy smokes, it's expensive. Yeah, plus you'd have to get like a like a food quality bin to store it in, right? You don't wanna just like, like leave it in a bag that the pests are gonna get into. So, um, and when you get those big, big, big things like big things of rice, big things of flour, it's good to freeze it for a while because that will kill any pests, especially flour. It will kill any pests um, that you, if you're going to decant it into something, it's good to like kill them all first. Well, who has a freezer that can <laughs> store that much flour for a while? Oh, it's just, it's a whole thing. How do they not get confused? Well, like they're, they'll say like, um, I have coriander here. What do they call it? Coriander, they call it ground coriander. So then you know it's the spice. Versus it's the same plant, right? How do you know if it's cumin seed or cumin powder? You just say, it's fine. It's not that bad. I've adjusted. Um, all right, let's let that cool off still. Keep thinking I want to do something with that now because I'm used to shoving it right in there and making stock, but I have enough stock. I'm going to leave these out. Hopefully he'll get to have them soon. I was looking at the Mexican grocery site and I'm laughing because I can walk in the store and grab everything that is there. Yep, welcome to my hell video. <laughs> I got a nice um, mortar and pestle from there, which by the way, they call a pestle and mortar here. Um, what else did we get? Oh, we got abuelita. Oh, this is, this is the, the crown of the Mexican grocery site. which I haven't made any in a while because it's been summer, but in, uh, oh, abuelita. Mexican chocolate's so good. You have access to the dehydrated peppers. Yes, but they're very pricey considerably. Comparatively here, and you actually usually have to buy pretty large quantities. So, like if so, if I want to make um, the what's it called adobo sauce, you need ancho, uh, guajillo, and ancho guajillo and the main one. <laughs> Anyway, you need all three, right? And I wouldn't want to get shitty quality or there's, there's some you can get um, Chipotle. Jesus, Jasmine. Uh, I can get Chipotle from like our local grocery store, but I'm not sure of the quality of it. I wouldn't trust that it's actually good. So, um, well, you're not wrong there, Mr. Twist. <laughs> it's just a slightly different version of jalapeno. Um, but yeah, then I'd have to get like three enormous bags. I think I priced it out. It was going to be like between 50 and 80 pounds, British pounds to, to get <laughs> the, the, like, because it didn't come in small packets. It was going to be so much money. Because it's just it's not there. This is why I'm going to grow my own in the future. It's bones. It's, it's exciting. This is why I can see why uh, there's not a lot of, like the, the babishes of the world, although I know he does stream on Twitch occasionally, like that's why they have YouTube. You gotta, those cuts, or Kenji, when he does it like the, and I'll be back in five minutes. Yeah, you can see the advantage of it. <clears throat> now I want some cheese curd stuff, prosciutto wrapped jalapenos. Twaz asked me for that one time. He wanted to do bacon wrapped jalapenos, whatever cheese was in, probably jack cheese or something in the in, in the inside. One, there's no jack cheese here. <laughs> Two, can't find jalapenos. <laughs> and three, the bacon here is different. They do have streaky bacon, which is like typical American bacon. But like, if I just like ask for bacon, I'm not gonna get what you think of as bacon, like as pork belly cut. You're not gonna get that. Uh, yeah, everything's, it's just hard here. Mexican things are hard here. Mm. 
<clears throat> it's a lot of money, but it would also be a lot of sauce. That's very true. It's not, you're not wrong. British bacon is so good though, I don't like it. It's not for me. I, maybe I still haven't found a way to cook it in a way that I agree with, but Twaz doesn't like it either. I, I came here and I introduced him to streaky bacon and uh, oven cooked streaky bacon. And then he has then deemed me queen of the universe <laughs> because of that. All right, I wanna get this, well, it's nonstick. I wanna make sure I get this font in the, the plastic bag that I'm gonna freeze it in as well. I'm sorry, environment, it's gonna be one of these. I'm sorry. I just like pork, that's fair. Do you know where to get some decent soil and plans to build a greenhouse? Uh, I can't here because I don't own this house. Uh, we just rent, and our landlord will not let us put beds in because this lawn is sacred for some reason. Oh my god, once we let it overgrow, you would have thought we just like like murdered somebody, Wait, how outrageously upset that they got. Um, it's like, sorry, we couldn't find a gardener, and it took a while to get one, and we didn't have a lawnmower. Sorry. Anyway, so they will not let us grow anything on the mass amount of, like, look at this. I hope you can see. Oh no, that lighting's terrible. There you go. You can kind of get a feel for, that's like a swath of our back garden. Um, it's quite wide as well. And our front garden is about the same size. It's really, it's perfect. I could grow our year's worth of food on the land we have, uh, but I'm not allowed to. So I'm gonna be getting a small container garden put together next year. I'm probably gonna make my own compost um, cause we have so much greenery here and kitchen food scraps and then, uh, the leaves are starting to fall. So I'll keep that for my Browns plus Amazon deliveries. You just get the brown piece of paper and shred it up. Easy compost. So I'll make my own compost. That's, that's easy. Um, and I'll order some seeds and grow what I can in the tiny little patio area that we have. It's, it's really unfortunate to have so much land and it just be a lawn considering I have the time, desire, and energy to put into, and money, to put into a vegetable garden, and I can't. It's quite girthy, it is. Pork is the reason I cannot go vegetarian. Mm. We have, um, speaking of barbecue, we have like a chain here in, I don't know if it's just England or if it's in, if it's in the rest of the UK as well, um, but it's a, like a smokehouse barbecue place and they actually get like barbecue supplies and stuff. They go on a yearly trip to the South, um, and, uh, also a little bit like up the Eastern seaboard a little bit, but they go every year, they like talk to the pit masters and everything. And it's actually pretty legit. Their, their brisket is super good. I haven't had it in years because of COVID. Um, but it's so good. And I took Toise there, we had like fried pickles. He never had one of them, we had fried pickles there. And um, he had like some sort of sausage that I can't remember, it's been so long. Uh, and uh, like an American cloudy lemonade, which is, lemonade's different here. Uh, but it was so American, they had like baseball playing. It was, it was, it was good, <laughs> it was really good. <clears throat> Yard is garden in the UK and you can't grow anything in your garden. Isn't that sad? Well, the, they have like, this garden here is really beautifully, like on the outskirts of the actual grass. Um, it's very beautifully landscaped. She, clearly the woman who used to live here put a lot of thought into the flowers that would be blooming because from end of January all the way to like July, every week is a new bloom. And it, it's just like this, rainbow that kind of unfolds across the lawn. So it was really thoughtfully put together just for prettiness, right? Which I would keep because that keeps pollinators around. But then there's just like in the middle of that huge amount of pretty flowers is just grass. And you could have, I could grow, honestly, I could probably grow a year's worth of food for 
two to three families here. It's, it's, that back garden is south facing. It gets massive amount of sun all spring, winter, and autumn. It's just such a shame that it's for grass. Yeah, it is part of the tenancy agreement that we have to take care of the garden. We have to take care of a lot. More than I ever made my, uh, when I owned a house in Seattle. Like, we're responsible for the gutters, we're responsible for damn near everything. Stuff that, some, some of the stuff I think, um, I'm sorry, this, this is like improving the value of the home, not just maintaining the home. Uh, I shouldn't be responsible for that. There is a lot of good font on here. Ooh, that smells good. You cannot waste the good Maillard reaction chat, okay? Yeah, you'd think they would have handled it. I think they never really had a long-term tenant like they have us. We've been here for five and a half years. So any misgivings a tenant might have had, they probably were able to remedy pretty quickly or never got out of hand enough. But honestly, if it wasn't such a pain in the ass and I didn't love this house so much, I would have moved long ago because it's really difficult dealing with these landlords. They don't do anything bad. It's just they're really, they don't respond to problems in any sort of a timely manner. And they know they live fairly local, but they are a lot older, so. And they try to like, they, this is, it's not a pro, there's a le letting company that just handles like the lease, but there's not a property management company. So if anything needs to be fixed, we have to like wait for them to respond. Often they want to try to do it themselves and never ends up well. So, um, and it's, just, it's like <laughs> frustrating sometimes. Especially when your, your boiler is leaking heating oil and they want you to wait for their plumber. Like, no, we're calling an emergency plumber. <laughs> is that a Fallout vault Tech mug? You damn straight it is, Jelmer. There she is. This is actually the game that got me partnered, Fallout 4. Three acres to homestead. Oh my gosh, my jealousy is, is astounding. Ugh. I hope you have a lot of fun with adventure and you will very much earn your calories <laughs> because that's a lot of land to work. Hey, Reaver. Yeah, buying a house in the UK is also a considerably different process in the US. Uh, let me check these tenderloins. I think they're probably done. They're pretty thin. Um, I better move this here. Oop, well, I just moved all the juices underneath the parchment paper. It's fine. Oh, these are these are absolutely done, but I'm gonna do the right thing and check. Oh yeah, you're fine. How are you doing? Where are you at? Yeah, you're nowhere near it. But you little ones are. Come hither. I'm gonna burn my fingers. But better than finding a utensil. Back you go. You got like 15 more minutes to go, my friend. Juicy bitch. There you go, chicken. Forty-seven acres. Is it all usable land? That's a lot of acres. I had a third of an acre in my house in Seattle. <laughs> that poor house. I loved that house. It was. I was single. I had just gotten divorced the first time. Shush. Um, I bought that house by myself, my own money, 
but it took 11 months to move into because I was buying a short sale through Bank of America. Don't ever do that. Not that that happens as much anymore, but it was such a long wait for them to approve the short sale that the, and the owners weren't living there anymore. I think they, they literally had to vacate to go through the short sale process. And like the yard, from when I put in the offer until when I got the house, the house was a total disaster. Like there was mildew along the whole siding because it had not been taken care of for 11 months. The yard had over, was like grown up to my waist. Um, and I bought that house for my dogs. I had much space because I had two Huskies at the time. But I had big plans to like overhaul that house. But then I ended up moving to Florida after all that. I got to live there for a uh, about a year, a year and a half, and then that was it. Wah, wah. It's mostly wooded. That's 47 acres, but that's like actual amount to take care of. That's a lot, but you know, wooded is nice too. Get some buffer. Hopefully, like she can use some of the trees or something when they, if if and when they fall. Look at that. That's gonna that's gonna be so good. Look at all that. Yeah, you're gonna make a nice stock of someday. But that day is not today. Because I have a bunch. And I should get some out, actually. Chicken stock. Yar. Let's get some stock out. I need a cup for Toise's couscous later, so I might as well get it out. Oh, it smells so good. That is some stock. Finding space in this freezer is getting more and more difficult. It's another reason why I can't buy or make or pre-make large quantities of things. That's the tiniest freezer. Look at my stock. It's my stock cubes. I have these uh, freezer trays. They're so awesome. Where are they? Oops, make loud noises, Justin. Yeah, look how awesome they are. They're huge, it's one, about one cup or 250 mLs um, that you can freeze large quantities of things. Uh, it's fucking great. What was I thinking of doing the other day? It was a sweeter thing. I can't remember now. I was like, oh, that'd be great to make and then freeze. Oh well, forgot. But yeah, they're great. So I can make like big batches of stock, but I don't use it regularly enough to like keep in the fridge because it lasts like what three to five days in the fridge and usually I need like a week or longer so yeah let's look at look at like how dark and beautiful this stock is He's even frozen it smells delicious buying a house for the dogs is my biggest achievement in life but I also kind of regret it because the land needs so much upkeep I feel you scar and then it's like uh if I would have still be living there, like my dogs passed, <laughs> they passed away. Um, they're, they're, they're both no longer with us. So it was like, oh, it's because I had specifically Huskies, but I don't think I would ever would have gotten a Husky again. So it was kind of funny. But yes, it's a lot of upkeep. I feel like that's why you should get goats too. <laughs> Take care of some of the grass. That's really good, body rolling. Honestly, if you spend your time outside of the house a lot, you don't need as much house. Especially if you have outbuildings uh, that you can put like some chest freezers or other things in. I really would like love someday, even magpies are in the back garden. I can't, can't move suddenly, they'll freak out. Um, but even if you're like by, uh, in the season, like from farms, having like a food dehydrator or something I, I, sounds so cool to me because like all this chicken stock I make, 
like I, it takes up room in the freezer, but if I had a dehydrator, I could dehydrate it into a, like my own, basically my own bouillon and use it. And same with like, you can dehydrate so much stuff and the consistency comes back really well compared to like dried foods or frozen foods or canned foods. I have these two magpies. I have a, uh, a nest in the pine tree and um, they scared away my favorite pigeons for the year. Hopefully they'll be going when it gets a little colder, they'll go somewhere else. But they nested there and I had these two pigeons that I love uh, and they used to always hang out in the apple tree right next to the pine tree. But these magpies are, they're little shits anyway, but they also, they'll like go through and get all the worms and stuff out of the grass, but they're so skittish. Like if they even see you on the other side of the window, which is, it's, I don't know, 30 yards away. They're pretty far away. Um, maybe 20, doesn't matter. They're far. They, they'll see it and they'll freak out and run away and then I feel bad because I shouldn't feel bad. They're stupid, stupid asshole birds who made my favorite pigeons go away, but alas. Husband's a bow hunter. Interesting. Eight dogs. Wow. Oh, crap. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, bless your heart. You really did buy that for your, those for your dogs. Oh my God, that's amazing. And some ducks. Can broth be freeze dried? It damn sure can. It loses a lot of its volume and it's just powderized. It's just, it's basically like a pressed version of that is what bouillon is. Well, they put extra chemicals in there too, of course. But yeah, it can be. If, if you uh, get like little freeze dry trays and then you just like fill it with a liquid and very gently put it in the freeze dryer. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You can do like damn near everything. Um, what have I seen the Acre Homestead Lady Becky do? She does like um, her celery and onions and, and sometimes some carrots, but not generally carrots, but she'll do those. It's easy to put in like for a soup. The, the water from the soup will reconstitute it really easily. You can freeze dry fruit really well, especially sliced fruit. It, it reconstitutes back like pretty close to its original structure. Um, Cause like drying food, if you dehydrate it with like a dehydrator, it, it does a little cooking of the food. So it uh, changes its, its consistency and nutrient value and such. We're dehydrating or whereas, um, yeah, freeze drying. That's what I'm to say with freeze drying. Well, it, it doesn't do that. It's, obviously it's uses cold, so it doesn't cook it. Cool, Bina. Uh, but yeah, they're apparently they're pretty expensive, like entry point. But they, if you make your own food, they pay for yourself, themselves very well. But yeah, like liquids, all sorts of liquids you can you can uh, freeze dry, which is really cool. Anything you can get like out of your fridge or freezer and into like your pantry, because generally you have a lot more of that storage, the better, right? How are we doing, chicken? Well, you're getting there. You smell nice. Um, what's, I got this out. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. I do need to make my cashew milk, but I'm not gonna do it on stream. That's just gonna be loud. I think that's basically it. That's all I'm cooking today. For, for right now, anyway, until Twaz gets up. He hasn't woken up yet, has he? No. And I have to make my grocery order. Boo. Ooh, fancy. That would be fun. Liquid nitrogen gear. I'm gonna, I really wanna eat some of this chicken skin, but there's not a much, and I know Twals loves it so much. I'm gonna be a nice wife and let him have it. But I want you to know that I want it. 
How do peeps get all that land? They move far away from conveniences. <laughs> like, we live in farm country. Um, our village is pretty, pretty tiny. Uh, and we have like two, maybe one or two places that'll deliver to us for food. So if you want to trade, having like, and we could move further in the sticks. Like we, the only reason we're not is because we have to stay closer to his kiddo. Um, someday we'll move to the real sticks when there's no delivery. And hell, who knows if you can even get mail delivered. But yeah, you move away from conveniences, you can get a lot of land. You're very hungry right now. Stare at this chicken. There you go. Yeah, sorry I'm not cooking anything exciting anymore. Not that I was. I was just butchering a chicken earlier. <laughs> That's really the only reason I turned stream on. I, wasn't, I knew I wasn't doing anything exciting today, but I was butchering a, a chicken, so. But that's long done. I have to drive 40 minutes to the nearest store, no food delivery here. Yep, that's generally how you get land. Thursday is always about chicken. Why? That, I, that's when I do the biggest chicken thing for my husband. So he gets, we have like a, a menu and he, ba almost every day we make and eat the same thing. So Thursday is a, um, a big chicken day. Yeah. Wednesday is sausages. Tuesday I get my grocery delivery. Uh, so what, yeah, Thursday is about chicken. Friday is usually about chicken too because of his roast dinner. Yeah. So that's why Thursday's about chicken. There you go. It wasn't for the land necessarily, it's for the quiet. Yeah, that is a beautiful, beautiful part of it. Um, I can hear everything in our village. It's, we don't have like, farm amount of land. This is probably a half acre lot. We live in this like tiny cluster of, of houses in uh, like across the street is um, a sheep farm uh, and they have a couple other farm like stuff there and there's like a cow farm a quarter mile down the road that way. So I'm surrounded and there's a, a, like a horse breeder that lives over here. So I'm surrounded by farms that we have this like little tiny little village in the middle of all that. Um, probably to support it, right? Um, I don't remember where I was going with it. Oh, but the quiet part. But every, most people who live here, other than some of the smaller houses, most people who live right around us are pretty old. Like, I think that neighbor's in her 80s. He's in his 70s or 80s. The one over there, I don't know how old. I only see the top of his head over the fence, but it's very gray hair. Same over there. So like a lot of people much older than me that live here. So everything's quiet when it gets dark. It's so beautiful. So if there's a car driving down the road, I can hear it from like a quarter mile away. I know that there's a car coming, which is great when we're about to get like the one delivery coming. <laughs> but it's really bad if there's like a slightly obnoxious sound because there's no other sound to drown it out. So every once in a while, this one house's alarm goes off and it's just like grating because I'm so used to quiet. My brain has like relaxed. Uh, it's, it's auditory um, sensitivity because of it, but I am so sensitive to any sort of slightly disturbing noise now. So it comes at a slight cost. Are we done? 20 seconds, I think we can take a peek. Hello, love. You're gonna be a moist, juicy chicken, ain't you? I don't, I still, I've said this before, I don't understand why folks say baking chicken breasts comes out dry. Mine always comes out so fucking moist. It's my favorite way to cook chicken. Can we turn on? It's probably overcooked, honestly. Yep, we're good. But it's still gonna be juicy. Probably all the oil I shove on top of it. <laughs> it's magic. Now I want brekkie. Get brekkie. 
I'm gonna let this bad boy rest for a second and then they're just gonna get chopped up into cubes after everything settles. There you are. This will go on Toise's chicken, uh, chicken Caesar salad. These little bits I'll have like throughout most of the week. My general eating pattern is whatever's left over from Toise's stuff. No one gets a post delivered to the house, we'll have PO boxes because people really people don't know when it'll deliver to us. Yeah, that's that's how you know you're far out there. Oh my god, chat, no spoilers because I know not everybody's seen it, but we finally got to see Nope this week. I am a huge Jordan Peele fan from Keen Peele comedy and all of his monkey paw stuff that he does. I fucking love Jordan Peele. And, but we don't go to the cinema slash movie theater anymore for COVID and other reasons. So we always have to wait for things to be released for home release. And it came out like a month ago for some streaming services in the US and we thought it'd be the same in the UK. Nope, quite literally, nope. And it finally came out Monday. So Twaz and I stopped everything that we're doing. I had to do taxes. He had a bunch of work to do. We said, fuck it. We're finally gonna sit down and watch this movie. Oh, it delivered. I love, I love, 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 love everything Jordan Peele, but especially to have such a good one. I think, I think I still have an emotional reaction to us more than to Nope, but I think Nope is a better movie, if that makes any sense. You go feed those puppies. They're so good. Tell them all they're the best boys and girls ever because every dog is the best dog ever. Oh. Here, just stare at chicken. Look, look, we did this. I cooked. I'm allowed to be in this. <laughs> I feel like there needs to be an in-between, like a food and drink, but also like the cleaning up from the food and drink because then I could just like make you guys watch me do my dishes. I do want some sort of like house cleaning or something section. So when I go redo my office, you guys can hang out and not be in the IRL channel. Fucking IRL channel. I like to hide here in food and drink. Generally, this is not well um, uh, invaded by trolls <laughs> as the IRL one is. I like it over here in food and drink. Can we make like a, a housework one? You can tell me what wall to put a drawer, drawers on. Mostly I just want company while I'm doing a bunch of shit. Organization cleaning category, thanks. Yeah. We've already strayed very far from our video game days. Why not lean into the skid, right? Honestly, half the time I'm watching YouTube is I'm not particularly entertained by organization and cleaning stuff that people do but it's the motivation for me to get going. I've learned that about my stupid ADHD brain is if there's something I don't wanna do and I need to get in the mood for, I turn it and watch somebody else do it. And then it's like, it becomes, it helps you climb over the, the wall of awful to do it. Um, today, I knew I had to butcher this chicken and I wanted, I, I, part of me wanted to and I wanted to stream it, but part of me was being really lazy because I, I had a hard day yesterday. I cleaned the outside of all of our windows, which was a year past due. Um, so I scrubbed all of our outside windows and stuff yesterday. So I was tired and I was being lazy and I didn't want to. But then I watched, I put on uh, Kenji Lopez all watching him do some cooking stuff. I'm like, all right, get up, grab the stream equipment. You're going to go do it now. So that's what I use YouTube for. So I would use the same for streams. All right, that's done. Um, I'm gonna cut that up, but not yet. That needs to settle for quite a bit. Otherwise that chicken will be not nice. Do I have, I only have a bread knife left that's clean. I do have an older knife somewhere. Oh, I got rid of it when I organized. Damn my organization. I'll just clean it. You guys can hang out with me while I wash one knife. No, that just fell into raw chicken juice. My hot water takes forever to 
come out of this tap, even though the hot water heater is right there. Hot water tank's right there. For some reason, it takes a good 45 seconds for hot water to come out. Nothing like watching an episode of Hoarders to help me clean the house, yes. When I was, um, I, I like watching people overcome stuff, whether it's a mess, uh, an issue, um, like people getting in shape. I like watching people overcome. It's like the ultimate inspiration to me. So I was watching those, um, I wasn't the biggest loser because I have a lot of issues with that show. Um, but it was like, I don't know, one of those TLC shows about people who were losing weight. Um, I don't remember which one it was, it doesn't matter. But anyway, it's just like, it was inspirational watching people have a goal and go for it. Uh, and so I was watching those when I really need to like do the right thing for my poor little joints that couldn't handle being the, that much weight. Uh, same with housekeeping. I love the, the dirtier the mess. What's her name? Ari Katarina, I think is her name. She lives in, I think she lives in Finland. Um, I love her channel because like most people on YouTube, when you watch them clean, they're starting from a pretty clean house and they're just like making it slightly tidier. But she goes to people who have like, you know, difficulties with their mental health and struggling and she goes and cleans the crap out of that. I love watching like the extreme transformations. Whoa. Uh, sorry to hear that body rolling. Yeah, it's it. Anytime like uh, an emotional or mental struggle becomes so outward and visible, you get you see so much judgment and jokes about it. But it's just a manifestation of an internal struggle, right? An external manifestation of it, and and there's so many ways that happens. And when you when somebody's struggle is so visible and they feel shame for it, it's it sucks. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it was like Ori Katarina, but maybe that's it. I'm pretty sure, because every time I used to watch her, I'd be like, ah, Mew. <laughs> Thank you for introducing me to Vitamin String Quartet. You are welcome. That is the gift that keeps on giving. I haven't listened to any music other than what Twaz puts on. He's so cute. He'll put on a song and then he'll grab me and we'll dance to it. It's so cute. But other than that, I haven't listened to music in so long. I really need to bust that out. Their food isn't ready yet. Aw. Welcome back, Scar. Okay. Crispy chicken bits. That's not a lot of fat. I'm probably not going to even use that for much. But that's okay. Probably should cover that now. I have these teeny, teeny, tiny little gnats. They're like greenhouse gnats from the herbs that I get from the grocery store. I get the living herbs instead of the the clippings. They, just, they last forever and it's cost effective and propagate them pretty easy. But they usually come with some gnats uh, that live in the moist soil and I keep forgetting to get sand to put on top to help keep the eggs from being put into that moist soil. But yeah, that's why I got to cover things a lot. I hate it. This cleaning stuff and who's big enough to mention in local news sources. That's probably, that's probably her. But I've probably just heard it wrong. <laughs> or her channel is named something that, different than her name. I saw her once on like, I don't know, Instagram where it just like goes from real to real. But I really liked how joyous she was cleaning. Oh, look at this lovely mess. Like anytime, like the worse it was, the g more gleeful she was about it. So her attitude towards cleaning like pretty severe messes is always so lovely. Um, Cause I'm, I'm not a good, I'm, I'm good at like surface level cleaning, but I'm really bad at deep cleaning. So there's some places that are probably like pretty nasty, like behind the microwave that I never see. I'm really bad about that stuff. Never been my forte cleaning. I'm shocking and that an ADHD person not good at cleaning. But um, like when I have to do a job I really don't want to do, uh, 
the, I love to turn her on. She's just, she's just so bubbly. She's effervescent, that one, about stuff that I really loathe. And there's something like very um, contagious about that. So wish I could just like write her a message. Hey, thanks for making my cleaning suck less. <laughs> Oh, her TikTok is, ah, yes, okay. Ah, okay, Mew, makes sense. Thank you. I was like, there's no way that it's the same name and it's cleaning, but like, I remember her last name being different. You figured out the mystery. I don't know what I'm doing. Sorry, this is... This is me. I don't know what I'm still doing streaming or what I'm doing in the food channel. I'm just standing here. Look at chicken I've cooked already. <laughs> Aren't you excited? Should we talk about vitamins some more? Oh, who even am I? Where did I put the vitamin box? Oh, Thursday, that's today. Is it hiding somewhere here? Hello? Oh, great. I absentmindedly. Ah, oh, here it is. <laughs> no! I have to have it in here. I once. I was in like a really good ADHD place, or so I thought. I think it was like August through November of last year. I was doing really well. I was getting my shit together, I had a bullet journal. I was able to get my stuff done every day. I was cooking more, which was like one of my goals is always to make sure I'm cooking and not ordering uh, food for delivery because it's my body does not agree with it. And like, I just, I didn't take my vitamins for two days in a row. I was just distracted and I forgot to do it. And I hadn't done the whole thing where I pair my vitamins with my first coffee of the day. I hadn't paired something that I forget with something that I'll never forget. Um, so I missed it two days in a row and everything went the fuck downhill from there. I started drinking some more alcohol again, which in general I'm not against, but not when I'm trying to get my brain and my shit together. Everything went downhill. I stopped cooking. I stopped doing everything. I went like into a, a burnout depression from like February through March of this year. <laughs> and I just like started taking my fucking vitamins again. Boop. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Ika, Ika. She does a lot of stuff where she helps depressed folks get their apartments in order. Yeah, that's her. She's lovely. She is lovely. I've, I literally, effervescent, that term was created just for her. <laughs> She's so fucking lovely. All right, these tenderloins have been around for plenty, so we can at least chop those up and I can be like in the food directory for some sort of reason. General background always helped me a lot with cleaning. For me, it's just getting started. I have like, I have a big wall of awful. It's hard when I have really low dopamine, when I'm not doing everything I need to do for my mind and my body, which I noticed things started getting harder when I stopped having dogs. Dogs, especially huskies, made me get out of my ass out of bed early in the morning, no matter what time I went to bed, go outside for a walk. So I was seeing the sun early. I was moving and exercising. Um, I moved around a lot more, which is one of the biggest things for me. And then I forgot less because I was already getting initiated on the day. Their fur was everywhere, so I cleaned more regularly <laughs> anyway. Um, but once that stopped and I stopped working, so I didn't have like the emergency vibes anymore. I was just kind of like, I have a very peaceful, quiet life now. Like I'm not a college professor anymore with the insanity that comes with that. I basically, because I moved here and wasn't, was not allowed to work for a year, I basically just became a housewife because if I can't make money, then I'll help us save money. And, uh, and then it's just, I kind of just kept carrying that on after I got my visa and stuff. But a peaceful life did not agree with my undiagnosed ADHD brain. All the stuff I lived off of to survive and to just get things done, it wasn't there anymore. So I, I have never had such a difficult time as when I was at peace, which is a horrible thing. And imagine my poor husband has given me this beautiful piece of life and can't understand why, like, I can't get anything done. I'm not happy and beating myself up. 
Oh, it was a disaster. Now it doesn't take much to get me going cleaning. There are some days that are harder than others. And that's usually like my hormonal cycle because your hormones really fuck with your brain chemistry. So, um, most days now I'm like, I got to do this. Okay. Like yesterday I was like, Oh, it's going to be somewhat sunny today and it's about to be fall. Today's the day you're going to clean the outside of the windows. And I just got up and did it instead of like having a whole argument in my brain. But while I'm cleaning, I don't, uh, sometimes I don't even need background noise now. I kind of train my brain out of it. Um, but when I am having a harder time or I know it's going to be a long session before, before I'd hit the go live button, when I'd be in the kitchen all day, I would put like Andrew Huberman podcasts on or, um, uh, cooking shows or something on not so much music. I don't know why I know a lot of people clean and cook to music a lot. I don't know what it is. My brain has not been liking just listening to music. I like music when it's like in a movie or a show, but I have not really been enjoying music on its own for a while. And I, I don't understand it. It's weird. Donate me a Labrador or a Terrier. I'd take the lab over the Terrier for sure. Uh, if my, if we were allowed to have a dog, I would totally get a dog. I, I haven't had a dog in the five and a half years I've lived here and it's been hard, but someday when we move and own our own house and don't have to worry about like the worst case scenario is you get a dog and then you go to try and find a new house to rent and you can't find a place that allows you to have dogs. Oddly as dog friendly as it is here in the UK, it's really hard to rent a place that allows dogs. You know, Twas looked for me for a while and very few would allow it. Maybe it's just where we live. I don't know. Um, but that's like the worst case scenario is having to move because you're renting and then not being able to find a place that allows you to keep the dog. So we're just going to wait until we buy a house. It's really hard. I just see every dog on my walks and it become their best friend for a minute. <laughs> that's about all I can do right now. Your depression ate away at your music listening habits. Yeah, isn't it weird, Mew? I don't know what it is. It did coincide with like the start of my my decline. And I mean, every I think everybody had somewhat of a decline in 2020, but mine started around there. I got real sick, which might have been COVID. We don't know. In March of 2020, and um, and then obviously the pandemic was there, and then. Twitch community got hit hard with the thing, and then uh, the, 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 just the society's general downfall and uh, election and all the stress that went along with that and paying attention to American politics, but also needing to pay attention to British politics. It was so stressful. Um, but that was the beginning of me not liking music as much. I don't know what it is. Oops. Like if Twas puts it on and we dance to it, it doesn't seem to bother me, but I don't like to listen to it. Look at that. Look at it. Oh, it's so juicy. You're so good, little chicken. I listen to new music when working, so I don't focus on it unless I find I like it. I'm prone to procrastination. Me too. That's another ADHD thing, I think, for me anyway. If I make it time urgent, then I'll do it. Dog, we're dog friendly for smaller dogs. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's a, a, an England thing. Maybe it's where we live in England. Maybe it's the types of houses we were looking for. It was just, <laughs> yeah. Because at the time I had my, my, my female husky. Um, luckily, my ex-husband ended up taking her because she was 13 or 12 when I moved here. And I did not want to put her through those plane flights, so. Um, I was kind of desperate to find a place. My parents were going to maybe take her, but then my ex um, said he wanted her, which is perfect. <clears throat> she got to go back to her papa. But yeah, so he was trying, like, just in case I had to bring her here. He was looking everywhere just for the house that we needed and wanted, could not find anybody who would take a dog. It's crazy. Mostly listen to music when I'm driving. I used to do that. I remember being in a car. It's been so long. Oh, crazy. Oh, yeah. Scotland is, is kind of notoriously nicer about 
the puppies. Where do you live in Scotland? Like, you don't have to tell me exactly where, but like, roundabouts. That's, that's, my, that's my place I would, would love to move to. Please don't leave until, <laughs> until I'm able to move. Then I'm, all, then I'm all for it, okay? But don't go <laughs> until I'm allowed to move there. Oh yeah, Scar, my, uh, when I got my male husky, I got my, my ex and I got him like two weeks before Christmas and we were both going to California to visit our parents. We lived in Seattle at the time. And um, when you, you don't think about getting a dog right before Christmas until you cannot find a boarding place with any available options. And you're fresh out of grad school, so none of your friends have a place that can have a dog. So I had to fly with my husky after having him for like two weeks down to California, and that was such a nightmare. I was so worried, and he did so poorly. He was so bad at flying. So bad. Yo, JT Money, what's up? Near Glasgow, nice. I love Scotland. I've never actually been, because busy. Uh, hard to move around when you're an immigrant, but I love a lot about it more than just the looks. I love a lot about Scotland uh, that I would, I cannot wait to hopefully move there, but don't go yet, please. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that, that boy uh, never flew on a plane again. My female did, uh, Lexi did, she flew on one plane. And she did great, but she was much calmer. Loki was like my male. He was a bananas dog. He had so many issues. I adopted both of them um, from shelters, and they both came with their issues. But Lexi's were tolerable, and Loki's, well, basically the reason Loki passed away is he died of a heart attack from a thunderstorm. That poor dog. <sighs> supposed to move for my job, but I'm... Having trouble finding prep friendly places? No. Oh, Ika. Is it a big move? And also, that sucks. That's like my fear is to love an animal and then not be able to take it with me. And my the family that, my in-laws that live here uh, wouldn't want to have a doggo, so like my backup in case wouldn't happen here, so hence no doggo. <laughs> That's good, Scar, but what I meant is like, Scotland don't leave the UK yet until I have a chance to move there. <laughs> I still don't have citizenship, so, uh, and we have to wait for his kiddo to, to graduate, so. So hang in there for like six to eight more years, okay? <laughs> Please. <laughs> but also, I'm glad that you're not moving anytime soon because that's a huge investment. Not having a problem finding it. Oh, did I read that wrong? Oh, you're not having fun. Okay, well, then I'm an asshole for reading wrong. That one word makes all the difference in that sentence. See, my schedule makes perfect sense to have an animal. I could totally have an animal because I'm home all day, every day, and so is my husband. We never leave. We are the perfect animal household. We actually did a, there's a thing called like borrow my doggy or something like that here, and we did that for a while. Um, this guy who lived kind of, he worked kind of nearby, but his dog was like clearly a Velcro dog. It was a black lab named Boris. Um, uh, he used to drop him off like once a week and the dog would hang out here, take it on walks. And that was the sweetest fucking dog. I loved it. But then the guy like lost his job and he uh, didn't need us anymore. So I was like, ah, oh, okay. But cause I didn't have a car. I can't go to the dogs. So that was kind of the end of that. But that was a cool dog. <laughs> Twaz has never had a dog. And I think Boris like really warmed him because not, most dogs don't like super warm up. Twas is a big dude. He's like 6'3". He's a tank. Um, and he's got a booming voice, a deep voice. So I have to like try to explain to him like, you know, unless dogs are exposed 
to like people like you, you're often going to be really intimidating to a dog at first. You have to make yourself small, speak a little lighter, just don't move so suddenly, be very gentle. So I like told him all this before Boris got here and he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> and Boris is just like the best dog in the world. He Twas sat on the ground like Indian style and Boris walked right out to him, sat down and plopped right on his lap. All he wanted to do was like touch, like, be, be touching a person and let them like fawn over him. It was like the perfect dog for Toise to like get to know. It was great. Toise is short, got it. Listen, BDO. <laughs> Toise was like, he's tall, but that's not his imposing feature. He used to be a rower. So like, he's a big dude anyway, but his back expanded so much. I say his shoulders are, are in different post coats because he's got such a broad back. It's like, I'm like half of him. <laughs> I just put two of my little shoulders next to him. It might equal the full width of him. So he's just like, you know, and dogs aren't used to that. Some dogs. But Boris was fine with it. Antisocial, how are you today? I think there's an issue, Auntie, with our uh, Discord anyway. Because I changed my name on Twitch, uh, it lost a link somehow. So it used to be like if you had, um, if you were a subscriber, you could automatically get into it. It's just to keep trolls and bots away because I'm not, I don't want to police my Discord. <laughs> so it's basically just like an invite only. If you want, um, if you follow me on Twitter, because I won't be able to do it right now, uh, or if Ika has a, a thing, I don't know how busy Ika is, um, but he can send you an invite to Discord, because we know you, you're welcome. You're not going to ask us to um, give you Bitcoin in our Discord, so. But yeah, th that was just for ease, but I have something wrong with it and I'm too lazy to fix it. <laughs> Chat, I think I'm gonna go. Twaz will be up soonish, and uh, I'm gonna say hi to him. And I'm gonna do a little cleanup. And I got, I am the size of your standard door. Yeah, I get it, BDO. Fill the door for you. Get it? You get it? <gasps> Soli! Soli, we were talking about your homeland. How are you, Soli? It's lovely to see your face. Just as I'm about to leave. Update grocery order. Got it. Thanks. Thanks, phone. Super Velcro dog for a couple of reasons, so he loves his... Aww. That's lovely. It's good that you can provide that, though. It's, it's, it's a beautiful gift to love and care for a dog, so... I'm good, Sully. I'm literally about to go. I'm very sad that I can't talk to you much longer. But you're neat, and I high five you. Boop! And I hope you can find a raid team and that you're well and you're a nice human being. Your timing is bad, you're the worst. Hi, Tago! Um, okay, I'm gonna go. I got nothing else to cook, so I'm not gonna just like loaf around. Because I, I got laundry to do too. Fuck! All right, I'm gonna go do that. Chat, thanks for hanging out while I made chicken things. And um, there's some chicken skin there. Then now we're in the cooking channel. Cool. All right, chat. You guys have a good day. Go into the ether that is Twitch. And you don't raid anybody because that would require effort. And I'm, this is an effortless stream, so. <laughs> I love you guys. Mwah. I'm gonna try to do a Lego stream. Finish that Lego build soon. I need to finish it, but probably next week because this week's been difficult. Fuck taxes. All right, chat. I love you. Have a good one. Thanks everybody for hanging out and smile and be kind to yourself and be kind to others. And if you butcher a chicken, a whole chicken at some point because you were inspired by today, let me know. I want to see it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. That